transverse fibers of the dorsal apparatus are the proximal most fibers that go across transversely, distal to the sagittal bands, but they are the proximal most portion of the dorsal apparatus per se. The sagittal band fibers I do not consider as being a distinct part of the dorsal apparatus. They are adjacent to and these fibers of the transverse and sagittal bands overlap one another. As we can see here, the sagittal band fibers lie underneath the transverse fibers and the oblique fibers to some extent overlap also the transverse fibers but the majority of them are distal to the transverse fibers. This is a very important point to remember because as we proceed through this series and talk about the importance of the interosseous muscles for metacarpal phalangeal joint flexion, these are key concepts that relate to understanding that. Let's imagine that the metacarpal phalangeal joint is in extension. Here we have the metacarpal proximal phalanx in extension. In this position, if this interosseous muscle contracts and pulls through these transverse fibers, the transverse fibers are not very mechanically affected because this pull is not directly into them. The pull here would go more directly this way in a straight line. You can see then that the pull actually would transfer better to the oblique fibers when the metacarpal phalangeal joint is in extension. But when it is flexed, there now is a more direct line of pull into the transverse fibers. And these transverse fibers are the primary flexors of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. I would like to repeat that. The interosseous muscles via the transverse fibers are the primary metacarpal phalangeal joint flexor. But as we saw, they are not very good flexors when the metacarpal phalangeal joint is in extension. They are much better flexors when there's some flexion of the MP joint, which allows these fibers to be in a position where they have more efficient mechanical pull. Another way to say this would be some MP flexion allows the interosseous muscles via the transverse fibers to be better flexors. So the point to remember is that the role of the transverse fibers is determined by the position of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. When the MP is extended, the transverse fibers are not very active, but when it is flexed, they then can receive the direct contraction of the interosseous muscles being strong MP joint flexors. What about the oblique fibers? How do they work? As we've said, the, the oblique fibers cover the majority of the dorsal apparatus. One would think that they therefore carry a great deal of power. But this power that they carry, even though this drawing makes it appear that they end at the central slip insertion, in reality, this is just part of the dorsal apparatus and tension within this is actually tensioning the entire dorsal apparatus one cannot consider this totally separate. The central slip, which is the continuation of this extensor digitorum communis distal to the sagittal bands, traverses through the mid portion of the oblique fibers. But it is connected to them and not separate from them. There is no separate independent excursion. So the oblique fibers receive tension from the extensor digitorum while also receiving their core tension from the interosseous muscles that insert here proximally. The reverse is true of the oblique fibers as compared to our discussion with the transverse fibers. When the metacarpal phalangeal joint is in extension, 
the oblique fibers have a straighter line of pull than the transverse. Therefore, the oblique fibers are more active when the metacarpal phalangeal joint is extended than when is it, it is flexed. We see inflection here, and we recall that the transverse fibers receive the direct line of pull. The oblique fibers are receiving a less effective and more indirect line of pull. So the role of the oblique fibers as well as the transverse fibers is influenced by the position of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. The position of the metacarpal phalangeal joint is the prime determinant for whether transverse or oblique fibers are more active. Certainly, they both are receiving tension, but which is getting a more direct line of the tension? 